Baronets and Cockney Threats. Punch above your weight, romantically speaking. Bemoan the plight of the unskilled aristocracy. And, my dear, if the underclasses desired to better themselves, they would simply stop being so poor. Pull yourself up by your bootstraps. It's time to talk told to me. I ate my bootstraps. Pull yourself up by your ragged, smelly socks. <laughs> I threw out some socks recently. Very proud of myself. Yeah, it's, it's always the hardest thing to do, isn't it? Welcome back. I am Omen Thomas Sade. And I am Nick McGill. Together we are Factless Moans. And this is Talk To To Me. A cataloging of the social class structure of prog rock in which Nigel Ben Nick and Oily Rag Omen will dance a delicate social tightrope twisted together from every single track that zig and zag rock band Jethro Tull has ever produced. We will ask the hard questions, such as, is Martin Barr's bacon back or streaky? Does Peter John Vitesse take his tea with or without laudanum? And was David Pegg's pudding peerhood procured through poetic potteries? And if we don't tread too heavily on his West Ham reserves, we may hope one day for an audience with the man who makes a million a month on Only Flutes, the Lord of Prague Parliament, Ian Anderson. <sighs> Took me a moment to realize that only flutes was 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 a proper noun and just one word, it, but I, I got it. It's it's good. Yeah, there's some there's some really really great content on there, Nick. You should check yeah. it out. Yeah, no, it's it's for educational purposes only. It's for educational purposes. Yeah. I've lost a lot of money tipping the flautists on there. It's just research. Yeah. Welcome back. Hello. Hello, Omen. Hello. It's been a minute. It's nice to see your face. It is nice to see my face as well. Also, it's nice to see how happy your face is at seeing my face. The face... We're in the face place. <laughs> yes. Nick, and, and with our faces, we intend today to talk tall. That we do, yeah. What is the song about which we are talking tall this very fine podcast day? We are eyeballs deep into bonus tracks off of Broadsword and the Beast. We're going to talk rhythm in gold today. Oh, how fascinating. I believe, Omen. This is a new song for you. It is a new song for me. I have not yet had it within my ears. Very exciting. Very, very thrilling my ears are soaking wet. Just virginal and ready to go. It was because my headphones are sweaty. Oh, just sweaty headphones, yeah. That too. <laughs> Great, so we're talking about rhythm and gold. Exciting. Anything before we dive straight in to this exciting bonus track? No, 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 I don't think so. I think we should get into it. I think we should listen to it for the first time. Let's pop a listen. Pop it in. Just right in there. Nick. Omen. There we have Rhythm in Guild. First thoughts right out of the gate. First time hearing it. What do you what do you got for me? Unexpected. Mm. It really to me sounds it, it's a great bridge toward the the later stuff with the catfish rising. Okay. Crest of a Nave, that whole era. Okay. It's got some it doesn't sound like that material, but it's got some sounds that point in that direction, if that makes sense. Yeah, I think I get what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, and and so it has more of a. It's got a f a foot in broadsword and the beast, and another foot in the direction of that post under wraps sound. Yeah, the door is slightly open, and one foot is edging toward the door. Right. There's a there's a shoe in the street. <laughs> That's what they say. Oh, yeah. oh no, <laughs> just a shoe. Just a shoe. Whenever you see a single shoe on the street, do you ever think, oh, a one-legged pirate bought a set and didn't have any use for the other one? I, I've never once thought that. Really? I've never. It's always, it's always, what's the story behind this? Yeah, well, that's where it starts, but yeah. then I always assume. That the, that the story is a one-legged pirate bought a yeah. pair of shoes. And that every time he, he or she or they buys a new pair of shoes... They get enraged because they're asked to pay full price and then end up throwing one shoe away in the street. That's true. 
Yeah. It, it would make me mad. I, I get it. I get it. It's the, the plight of the pirate, really. The plight of the pirate. Why are they doing this to me? And just imagine if they've got a hook for a hand, too, and they buy a pair of gloves. It's just game over. It's tough. Yeah. It's tough. But back to the song <laughs> at hand. Yeah, there's there's a heaviness to it. There's a, uh-huh. a layered heaviness. Yep. It seems a bit experimental. Like, I would say yeah. that this this is a great... This is one of those songs where it's like, oh, yeah, this is why it's a bonus track and not on the album proper. Yeah, let's try this, and we're done. I think last week when we spoke about Overhang, both of our reactions was, my God, why wasn't this on the album? Mm-hmm. Or why at least is this not out there more? Yeah. With this one, I could, I sort of think, yeah, I, I see why this is where it is in its position. That's, we don't see that often with Tall songs, even with bonus tracks and stuff, obviously. But when you do, when you do get to that point, you, you like, you know it, you feel it in your heart that this, like, oh, bonus track, totally, absolutely. And that's not to say this isn't a good song, because it's, no. it's, it's really quite cool. Yeah. It's very... It's got a lot going on, and there's some stuff that's very unusual for Tall. I think this is one of those songs that we heard a lot of when we were doing Heavy Horses bonus tracks. This this feels like one of those songs that's not fully realized yet. Mm-hmm. That mm-hmm. clearly was cutting room floor, was clearly uh, Steve Wilson or whoever. I don't think that... Yeah, this isn't a Steve Wilson re-release because they haven't re- done the the Steve Wilson for. That's right. We're for still at the yet. date of recording, waiting on that material. We are. So, so whoever was digging through the the archives was like, "This is enough to throw on there for a bonus track," but it just never. I feel like it never got pushed to a, a point of, of finality. There, you know, maybe it's take take three of five or what what should have been five. Sure. Well, why don't we break it down musically a little bit here? Sure. And talk about the specifics. Mm-hmm. My first, my initial thought when I heard that drum fill that starts it off, <sighs> yeah, was, is this a tropical flavored song? It's got it a little bit, yeah. It has that a little bit like a yeah, just like I almost expected the steel drums. Yeah. Yeah, I have palm fronds and Ian dancing around in a in an unbuttoned Hawaiian shirt and a lay around his neck. Yeah. Yes, I, I which you know, probably a great idea. I I would love to see that concert. And and with the the vocals that he comes in, the kind of like scatting that he he comes in, it it just feels even more like that. That hey, ga, ooh, we're playing, we're playing, that's, we're playing rhythm and gold. That, that's his that's his secret language of birds. Look. Yes, it feels yeah, absolutely. It could be it could be a Hawaiian shirt with the back cover on the back of the shirt or with the cover on the back of the shirt. I get it. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 And then but sh- shortly thereafter we get into the the dark heavy feeling of the song and it very quickly ceases to be hinting at any kind of tropicalness. That that bass. Oh my goodness, that bass. <laughs> Peggy's crazy funky bass throughout the whole thing. I mean, it comes in hot right in the beginning and it it sticks all the way through. There's something really fascinating about the bass that I wanted to point out. And this Mm -hmm. is what I find so unusual in the tall canon that for a lot of the song, for big swaths of the song, David Pegg is playing a four on the floor, dum, 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 rhythm. And it's very hard and kind of like, you know, almost aggressive. Wait, are, the, are you talking about the bass drum? No, the bass, the bass, the bass, bass, and the bass drum. Okay, okay. They've paired them up, and and it's got that four on the floor rhythm. The whole thing appears to be in four four time. Uh, although Ian, with his flute riffs, feels like he's fighting against that at some points. Yeah, I I want to. I'll talk more about that. But yeah, I want to. I want to put a pin in that. But go ahead. I hope. No, put a bunch of pins in it. <laughs> put a pin in it like it's a voodoo doll of your ex girlfriend, of your of your ex science teacher, my ex voodoo teacher, my ex voodoo teacher. <laughs> there we go. But but we rarely see that. I mean, often the rhythms in the in the drum and bass section are much more complex and mm. you know have a lot more prog qualities to them, even with the simpler songs. Which again leads me to feel like this is unfinished. 
as well as the prominence of the base. It's super rare that we get a base that's so forward in the front. I feel like this wasn't fully mixed down or something for, for Peggy's base to be so, so in your face here. I almost feel like it's intentional. I, I see, I think it's a, a good and valid argument that it could be an unfinished piece, but I kind of feel like it's finished, mm-hmm. but they decided to do something out of the ordinary for, for the band. Right. For how, for just how different the entirety of the song sounds, yes. I, I, 100% I can feel, I can see that it is, that it could be uh, an instance of, ch- of pure, pure artistic choice here. I do think that there is some, I, I agree with me and what I've just said. <laughs> Great. I'll, I'll, I'll just, you. I'll just step out. You guys can keep going. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, bring back some coffee. <laughs> but, but I also agree with you in the sense that it does, it does have that kind of unfinished sound. For me, the song suffers a little bit from there being too many layers mm-hmm. and, and them not necessarily all functioning in the way that sometimes, you know, one of the things that we love Tull for is their ability to orchestrate. Mm-hmm. And this song is not particularly orchestrated. It feels almost like a different band, like a, you know, we're we're just going to play this straightforward rock and roll kind of aggressive, sexy, dark rock. Right. Right. I, and that's, that's the next thing in my notes is it's, it's like too many too. That was that, that wall of cacophony and there's still a liquidity there, but the streams never quite match up. You know, there's only, I think, mm-hmm. where it's in the, um, there's a bridgy breakdown part where they do match up and it shows a little bit of promise, but then it kind of, the tethers come undone again. And it's it's a lot like Too Many Two, where it's just, it's it's never quite comfortably seated. Uh-huh. Yes. Yes. It seems like Ian is always playing the flute. It seems like Martin is always playing the guitar. The independently though, they're like, I'll play this. And mm-hmm. you know, I'll play this. It's not, it doesn't feel collaborative, but maybe that's a part of it. You know, I do think it could be, you know, there is, there is a sense in this song that there is a lot of struggle and tension and it does lend itself to that kind of, that feeling of internal tension or perhaps tension with society Mm-hmm. So it does work for the for the content. Right. Right. And and a a part of me a part of me wants to to a part of me will put the I think the bulk of this uneasy unsettling feeling on the the lyrical structure here in that it's that Ian singing is almost always like really the most prominent thing you hear. And sure. when it does not jive with everything else that's going on, of course, it's going to be really jarring and, and keeping you on your toes and not in a good way. Right. And is that and is that intentional here? Is that meant to create that sense of tension or did they just not quite find the scansion of these lyrics within the music? It's hard to tell. See, that's the thing. That's the thing. It, it feels it feels so perfectly unpolished enough that yes. it, it could be intentional, but we have seen instances. I think it was, was it Botanic Man? We've seen an instance here or there where it was an unfinished song and, and it didn't line up and the scansion didn't work quite right and it didn't feel finished. And I, I'm having a hard time figuring out which side of things that this one lands on. Yeah. Where is this? Well, we've talked a number of times We've talked at least once before about how Ian's unique approach to Scansion is one of right. the things that makes Tall unique and that he he sings things in not in the way that you would necessarily expect them to be sung rhythm wise, mm-hmm. rhythm and gold wise. Right. Get them enrolled. That's uh, that's my law firm, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's something almost OK. I'm a, I'm about to I'm about to put my foot into dangerous waters here. Can't wait. Now that I've done that, I will talk more about the music. Good. Carry on. But there's something almost a little bit atonal about this song. And I don't mean that literally in terms of the actual definition of atonal music. Mm -hmm. But there's something, I guess, a little dissonant about this song. Yes. Yeah. I'm good with that. Yeah. Thank God. (laughs) 
I had my bags packed. Ready to go. And the chord structure of the song is very peculiar and very, I think that's where we get a little bit of that sense of progginess, especially with that breakdown. There's a little bit of that, some, some different kinds of modulation and, and it, and it all creates the sense of dissonance, which is yeah. furthered by the lyrics and how they're sung, which is great. But you know, for me, a little, a little bit of dissonance goes a long way. Yes. Absolutely. You can always add more dissonance. You you can't take it out once it's in there. That's right. Otherwise, you have to add a potato or just add more gin. Soaks up the dissonance, right? Right. Soaks up the dissonance. So the ending is kind of the most fun part. It really accentuates the synth, and we get those fun bumps at the very end. you got to sit through like two minutes and 40 seconds to get to it. Which isn't that long. It's not that long. It's actually a relatively quick song. And that's with repeating the second verse, verse in in air quotes, twice. So it's really a verse a minute at this point. Yeah. It's It's not a bad song. I really didn't like it at first. I had heard it a couple of times in passing, never really took the time to really listen to it. But I, I listened to it a handful of times today. In, in preparation, and it, it kind of grew on me after a while because of its mm-hmm. kind of bizarre nature, you know? Mm-hmm. It's, totally. It's it's like those those cats that don't... It's like a sphinx cat, you know? It's hideous, but it's also beautiful in a way. <laughs> yes, I know what you mean. Yeah. It's hideous, and you can't stop falling in love with it. Exactly, yeah. Also, my ex-girlfriend. <laughs> now that God, you're a it. weird monster. Let me give you a treat and a belly Please, rub. I want to hug you. That was about your ex-girlfriend. Here comes smooches. Yeah, that's it's, it's all been. That's what this song is about. Yeah. Actually, not that far off. Now that we... Should we... Should we... <laughs> Why don't we take a quick break? Yes. Let us. Let us do that. Quick break. We'll uh, we'll have a little 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 snifter or something, and uh, and we'll be right back. Oh, Omen, what what magical mystical concoction are you drinking right now? I am pretending to drink a cup of tea simply for the audio. Oh, that's great! Some good and then f- over here, I have some sparkling water. Some good foley work right there. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> What about you? Oh, oh, I have Partake Brewing's Peach Ghost, malt beverage with natural flavoring, non-alcoholic, because I don't do that no more. Sure, sure. It's a crisp, refreshing, with a hint of tartness, brewed with several malts, sea salt, and coriander. Sounds delightful. A fun and fruity twist on the popular sour style, which is actually what is on your uh, business card, isn't it? Oh, a fun and, a fun and fruity twist? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes, thank you. <laughs> when we were in college, a malt beverage melt meant something different. Yes. That was what you duct taped to your both of your hands in order to play Edward's 40s hands. Well, I mean, what, what, uh, what certain people did, I, I never... I never did that. No, you taped them to your feet. Right, 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 right. Long Island style. (laughs) Nick, what do we have to talk about during this break? We have ourselves an email from a regular writer inner at this point. This comes from Eldis Potier. Thank you for writing in. How fantastic. Eldis Potier has written in as regularly with the regularity of my bowel movements. Once a week? Once a week. Very I'm concerning. Very Ill. <laughs> this is in response to the episode that dropped just this week. And that was the first of our bonus tracks. That was Jacqueline. And that was when we read the first portion of Aldous's first email. And they write back in this week with the subject, well played, Momes. Well played. Oh, dear. What have we done? <laughs> dear Nick and Omen, thanks for reading my email. I didn't expect you to read that part of the email, but I got a huge kick out of the, if this song was a cat, I laughed out loud. Very well played. (laughs) It was about him griping about... Yes, yes, yes. And for the record, uh, Mactal has gone on and 
public pronouncement in the Discord saying he was less than enthused about the consumables analogies as well. <laughs> you know, it's uh, it's not for everyone. It's not. And, and it may not even be for anyone. It's a good thing we forgot to keep doing it. Eldis continues, you're in the midst of releasing your Broadsword bonus tracks episodes. The quotes are for the fact that these tracks first showed up on the 20 Years of Jethro Tull box set in 1988. At the time, I was working in radio doing news at a Top 40 full-service station. Despite the tiny market we were in, Chrysalis sent a copy of the boxed set to our program director. Cool. The station would never play Tull, and he knew I was a fan, so he gave me the LP set. Of course, I'd run out and bought the CD set as soon as it came out, but he wasn't to know that. <laughs> I can't believe Jacqueline never got onto the Broadsword album. It's amazing. Well, keep up the good work. The podcast just keeps getting better. In fact, if Talk Tull to Me were a piece of furniture, I'd say it would be a Lazy Boy recliner. Oh. Your first encounter with it might be a little awkward. You're not sure if it's attractive or comfortable, but after you sit in it for a bit, and then you put it in full recline, OMG. It becomes your favorite piece of furniture in the whole house. Yes, also like a, a Lazy Boy recliner, our podcast soaks up the bodily fluids of, mm -hmm. all, of our listeners. That's what Ooh, we're that here for. That sounds gross. P.S. Another little tidbit about my brother Ian proving his musical insight. We were driving home from our grandparents one night in the mid-80s. My God came on the radio, and I commented on the flute solo and Ian Anderson's prowess. My brother was unimpressed. Yeah, he's fast, but he's not that great. This was sacrilege until I later found out more about Roland Kirk, the true master, and Ian's admission that he only learned to play the instrument sometime in the 90s. Score one more for the Eans. Eldest Potier, a delight to hear from you, as always. Thank you for tolerating our, our peculiar brand of momery and for continuing to listen. An absolute treat. We encourage everyone to write in. Give us your, your jump starts. Give us your thoughts. Give us your, your talk tall to me jump starts, even. We'd love to hear those. And most importantly, give us $5 for the Patreon. Oh, yeah. And get in on that as well. Get in on that. It gets you the, the Patreon, gets you the Discord, and the bonus episodes. But if you just want to reach out to us, you can do so at momes at fecklessmomes.com, our email, or there is a contact us form right on the Feckless Momes website. Nick, why don't we mosey on back to the second half of the episode and continue to talk about Rhythm in Gold? Let's momsey on over to the rest of Rhythm in Gold. Oh, whew, out of <sighs> breath. Just <sighs> barely made it back to the studio. Why do we go so far away to do that? That's where the break room is. We're trying to get it moved closer, but, you know, it's it's lost in... Bogged down government regulations. You got to get all the permits. Tape. Yeah, it's it's a real pain. Yeah. Nick, I have a curiosity question about this song. <laughs> a curiosity question? Indeed. Give it to me. How many how many times was this has this song been played in concert, if any? Do you have any guesses? I'm going to guess five or fewer i i was five was going to be the number that i would go for so let's maximum five let's see maybe three what do we got rhythm in gold does it even show up on our list that's a negatron reynard okay. the fox has been played twice but rhythm in gold no not sir. yet <laughs> there's still time there's still time <laughs> okay so that kind of confirms for me that this was very much a, an experimental song yeah. and let's let's view it yes What's your take on it? Did you have a rough idea of what we're going for here? My initial take on this song was that it 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 make the content makes me slightly uncomfortable. -a. Yes, it is. It's a bit of a creeper song, isn't it? But it is it is creeper within a character, and therefore kind right. of more acceptable. Yes, it is a story about a creeper rather than a creeping song. Yes, it's it's not Ian being a slime ball. It's it's his usual like character. Maybe he saw someone doing this in some sense. Maybe he saw a, a glimpse of a pretty pretty girl walk by, and it just inspired him to think of a character. Just a glimpse. Just a glimpse. Just enough to spark the imagination. But this does kind of feel like it feels like one of those seedy street scenes where yes. you know someone's going past and the the bunch of lurking good for nothing 
guys smoking cigarettes with their hair slicked back are like, ooh, pretty lady. Mm. Mm. You, you're too rich for me, but boy, you want a bad boy. I don't know why he turned into a farmer. I apologize. A, a Midwest <laughs> farmer. <laughs> I bet you like sardines on toast. I can make that happen for you. I got avocado toast in the back. <laughs> Does this rag smell like chloroform? Uh, now, what I'm curious about is this this very poetic image of rhythm in gold. What do you make of that? It baffled me at first, and I now have a theory. I... I have a theory as well. My immediate thought is Rhapsody in Blue. Is it a play on Rhapsody in Blue? I don't think it is. Interesting. Noun in color. No, it doesn't work. Rhythm in gold is the fluidity and dancer-like movements of a woman decked out in gold, in jewelry. Mm -hmm. Yes, I came to the same conclusion that, you know, you know, in cartoons, when you have the cartoon woman walking away from the, from the, the male observer and Mm -hmm. they, they do that. Exactly what I was going to say. It's that, it's that, it's that, yes, it's the rhythmic walk of a woman and she's wearing lots of gold. In, in which therefore places her at a station, a specific archetypal station. And the, you know, the gold maybe, depending on what kind of gold it is, if it's jewelry, maybe there's a certain bounce to it as well. Maybe right, it a sway. It's yeah. kind of playing the counterpart of the rhythm. Mm-hmm. When I looked up on the internet, rhythm in gold tull, mm-hmm. it gave me a bunch of images in fa- of fabric and said, did you mean... Tool, or rather, showing showing results for rhythm in gold tool. <laughs> yes, yeah, that was great. That's that's what I wanted. Thank you, Google. Thank you for that. So I have to call you up. Think I've seen a vision of rhythm in gold. No cat could ever move that way. No puss would dare to be so bold. So bold. I have to call you up. I've seen a vision of rhythm and gold. No cat can ever move that way. No puss would dare to be so bold. Interesting that we have another cat yep. comparison coming quickly on the heels of Jacqueline. Yep, more cat references, of course. More, he's More sexy cat references. He's deep into it now. He's deep in... <sighs> The cat. Deep into the cat metaphor. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I feel like the I have to call you up is just another way of saying, hey, baby, give me your number. Right? Like, he clearly mm. doesn't have her number. If this dichotomous relationship is as it seems to be, like, he's saying, like, I, ne- I need to call you sometime. If, if they were, if this story was happening in the Bronx, it would be, baby, let me get them digits. Sure. Right. Does that, anyone say that anymore? Only in the Bronx, Nick, you have to go there. I, I don't want to. If this were happening in certain parts of the Middle East where contact between men and women is strictly forbidden in public, uh-huh. the technique would be for him to simply buy a burner phone with his own number programmed into it and toss it at the lady as she was getting onto the bus. There's something that I think is essential to the understanding of this song, mm-hmm. which is the presence of the boys. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. we have observed either on this podcast or perhaps just in life that whereas a, let's say a man, because it usually is in public will not necessarily make advances on a woman by himself. He is emboldened by the presence of his shitty little friends. Yes. Yeah. The, the cesspit of testosterone. Yeah. Yes. Cestosterone. Cespitosterone. Yeah. Cespitosterous. Yeah. (laughs) So, you know, we have this, uh, I have to call you up, which also could be, you know, like, oh, I, I, I'm so moved by your beauty that I have to holler at you. Yeah. Call you up. Could all, could just be a cat call. Could be a, Hey baby, where are you going? Because at the, at the end of that, we've got, uh, at the end of that verse, we've got, what's your name and where can I find you? What's your name? 
Right. So that that could be the calling up. He's shooting his shot, as the kids say. They some say that, yeah. Where it gets a little bit icky to me is must tell the boys to follow you, catch you where you go to ground. <sighs> Yikes! Yeah. Must tell the boys to follow you, catch you where you go to ground. Follow her. Watch where she lives. Don't don't do anything. Just follow her, so I can know. Well, and also the metaphor implied by going to ground. Going to ground is a hunting term. Yeah, where you an animal goes to ground when it hides in the midst of the chase, and then the dogs have to flush it out. So he's literally, right. you know, the the boys are kind of his hounds. He's literally, it's a it's very much a predatory. Oh yeah, vision which he's painting here, which is, you know, very um, moving, but but definitely super creepy. Very unsavory. Yeah. So we, we're definitely getting images of her being a woman of higher station. We get the the rhythm and gold, a lady of means I can see. A lady of means I can see. We get further into the start of verse two. Are you just a rich man's friend or was it always in the family? Are you just a rich man's friend? Or was it always in the family? So she, he clearly, he sees her with a rich guy. Is she just a friend of the rich guy? Is she a family member of the rich guy? Oh, interesting. See, I interpreted that as as a continuation of, of the visual of just her. That it's like, oh, are you are you a kept woman? Or do you yourself, you know, are, have you been, have you married into wealth? Oh, interesting. Okay. Or do you, or do you come from wealth yourself? Oh, that, I think that makes more sense. I like that a lot. Yeah. Actually, they both they both work. I do like those those parallels. That's interesting. The next line is the grossest thing to me. Okay, you seem to throw the challenge down by the way you didn't even look at me. You seem to throw the challenge down by the way you didn't even look at me. So this <laughs> woman has no clue that this asshole exists in the world and he takes that as a challenge oh oh she was just trying not to look at me oh she's really flirting with me yeah. she's playing hard to get no yeah, you yeah, are yeah. you're a cretin and you will not be stepped on Ooh. or she's or she's very aware that there's this creepy crowd of guys ogling her and she's you know just deciding not to give them any attention trying to ignore him yeah so it's funny that you say that that's the creepiest line for you because for me this is that's actually the line that slightly redeems the content because it seems really? to take the piss out of the whole concept. It, it's mm. so absurd. It's so far in that direction that for me, it almost feels tongue in cheek. Okay. Okay. But I mean, there are human beings who do operate that way. So it's not so absurd. Yes. But I think, for my, <laughs> no, I, of course there are. Yeah. But also I think Ian, I like giving Ian the benefit of the doubt. And I think that Ian is such an intelligent person mm, mm -hmm. that I feel like putting that line in from him maybe is a little bit of a tongue in cheek. M makes it the moment. farce. It, it, pu it puts it at the farce level as opposed to just like a really effective, creepy song. Right, right exactly. Right. That's my interpretation of it. But, but you know, you're right. It is, there, there are people who are like, who would, you know, take that as a challenge, as you said. Yeah. And I think I think it, it, it was something. It, it think it ties back to watching me watching you in the sense where it is some form of oh, stalkers. Wow. There's no connection, but they somehow manufactured it in their mind. That's a really interesting companion song with this. It's a, it's almost the other side of it. It is, yeah, absolutely, yeah. It's totally. This is the. You know, this could be that relationship from this side of things. This is the dude that you saw at the train station and who then showed up at the party. Maybe Ian is the lady of means. He, I mean, he is. He is the finest lady of means, yeah. Yes, and he is a rhythm in gold. He is. Jethro Tool. <laughs> we have to start like a, a hybrid record store slash fabric store? <laughs> to... To work that? No, it's it's a bit of a stretch. Well, especially when you get into the spandex section. Hey, there it is. Ooh. And then the next line is, it's the companion piece to must tell the boys to you. It's put the boys on you. 
and mobilize your 9 11. Uh huh. Now, I, you cannot find anything online 9 11 that's not about September 11th. Yeah. So do you do you know what this is referencing here? No, I don't, but I can I can take a guess. I feel like it might refer to a vehicle of some kind, a car. That was my thought. Yep. You know, cars often have numbers in the name. The mm-hmm. Fiat 500. Yeah. The Fiat 695. Yeah. Yeah, that that was my guess. That it's a some sort of a Fiat. Well, not if she's not if she's rich. The <laughs> Well, she has to be rich to to keep making the repairs on the keep Fiat. <laughs> my my only other thought, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense, is you know how you can also like talk about someone's presence, awareness around them as like the face of a clock, like your your six, your three, your nine. Oh, sure, I thought that, but nine eleven is like really just like a a forty five degree wedge in the in the front front left, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense to immobilize right. that. I'm going to blind you in one eye. <laughs> your periphery, it, your 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 death perception will be terrible, and I will rescue you when those hooligans run away. So I think it's like, all right, boys, jump in the car and follow her. Mm, mm. And then, so I mean, this is in the in the category of men are truly the worst. Yes, go on. I read this little article that somebody had written talking about you know deplorable behavior that he had observed in his male workmates. And Mm. part of the article was talking about having had a boss who not only admitted to, but was bragging about, you know, whenever the office got a attractive young secretary, he would go out and let the air out of her tires and (sighs) then show up when she was leaving and be like, Oh my God, you've got a flat tire. Well, I'll give you a ride as a way of getting close to her. I've been rewatching It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. And Dennis, the sexual predator character, has the Dennis system, which is like demonstrate value. So like he would he would do things like that. That's that's exactly what he does. And that character is a spoof is supposed to be a farce on disgusting people like this. But I mean, it's it's there. People do that. Literally do that. How grotesque. Well, and there have there are absolutely books that are written by men on how to, you know, how to get a woman through these seven techniques. I mean, it's just, it's how to do that. Yeah. It's just, it's just horrible. I would, yeah. I'm going to write a book saying, shut up, put on deodorant, <laughs> go get clothes that fit. Be like compassionate to human beings. That's all. Yeah. Maybe try being a human being. But anyway, yeah. I, I think that that kind of this, this immobilize your nine eleven. if we are on the right trail here, that that does refer to some kind of a vehicle. Because then it comes back at the sec- uh, on that third kind of verselet, sabotage your 9-11. Sabotage your 9-11. Yes, right. But then, then there's that next line, there's nothing I could do for you that would really matter much anyway. You belong to everyone. Rhythm and gold's the number that you play. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. I do feel like this is a three minute expansion of a 10 second emotional journey experienced by the worst man on earth. (laughs) Yes. When a pretty lady who is well-dressed walks by and it kind of starts with that, like starts with intrigue Mm -hmm. on the part of the gross guy. Yes. Okay. Starts with intrigue. I have to call you up. I think I've seen a vision of rhythm and gold. It goes to planning I have to tell the boys to follow you. What's your name? Where can I find you? Yep. Questioning. Are you just a rich man's friend? Kind of re-engaging with the certainty of it. You seem to throw the challenge down the way you didn't even look at me. Yeah. And then moving toward despair and anger. Oh. Which is realizing, yeah, I literally have no chance with this person. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's nothing I could do for you that would really matter much anyway. Yeah, absolutely. I'm so low class. We were destined for failure. 
Yeah. And then and, and also uh, an element of sour grapes. Well, you belong to everyone. Rhythm and gold is just the number that you play. I added the just, but rhythm and gold is the number that you play. It's you a know. bit like you're you're a tease kind of thing. You're Yeah, which is also very much part of that extremely violent, toxic masculinity mindset, which is, well, you know, what are you doing walking around in those sexy clothes making right. everyone want you? Right. That's that's your fault. Yeah. And the fact that it ends with put the boys on you, sabotage your nine eleven makes me think that he's gone from all the way from desire to anger, revulsion, and and retaliation. R- yeah, exactly. Retaliation for something that never, you know, for something that never happened except for in his head. Right. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, I think we got it. The nine eleven is really the only question, but it, I mean, it's got to be a car. I'm sure that one of our fine English listeners is going to say it's obviously this. Yeah. I'm sure it's like, you know, once you know of it, it's like, you know, it's like in America, we say, oh, it's an F-150. Right, exactly. Yeah. If you weren't from the States, you would not necessarily guess that that's a Ford. It's a Porsche. Porsche 911. There it is. See, I was wondering if it was a, if it was some kind of a fancy car. Yep. Yeah, it was, let's see, introduced in 64. So it's very likely that that's, that that's what this is. Yeah. We've reached the point of realization after about an hour. So everyone put your emails away. Stop yelling in the library. We <laughs> we figured it out. <laughs> in German, it's called a Nuneffler, which is 9-11. Nuneffler. Still under production. Wow. Yeah, they still make them. It's a long run. Oh, you know, I've seen this car. It's a, it's a fairly common looking Porsche. Actually, you know what? I think... I think my grandfather had one. Really? Yeah, I think so. I know I know that my dad took care of it for a while after my grandfather died before they sold it. And I think it looked looked like that. The really small, like little buggy one. Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. So this model has been has evolved throughout the years. The one that's called the nine eleven is was made from sixty four to eighty nine. And then Okay. They made a, a turbocharged version, which kind of came along at this, you know, overlapped. So it's it's sort of, you know, a, a, every major step forward, they have a different number series for it. Oh, sure. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Nick, anything else to say about Rhythm in Gold? Nothing for me. I got a, a more unsavory appreciation for it, but it's... It's not the worst of the bonus tracks that we've heard in the long run of bonus tracks. I think it's a great song, and it has a dark quality to it that's really fun. I think the song has enough... I think the lyrics and the the story of it have enough of a narrative context to remove it from actually it, it being that icky. And it gives us an opportunity to remind ourselves and our listeners that if you see an attractive person on the street, you don't need to talk with them. Don't need to. No. 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 Doesn't need to happen. Doesn't you don't need to. You don't need to do anything. There it is. Yeah. yeah. You don't even have to key their Porsche. Yeah. Or let the air out of the tires, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah, don't do that. Put the air back into someone's tires. Do your good deed. With ever with not without ever being seen. Over inflate someone's tires, please. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing will look as sexy. As being a good Samaritan feels. That's pretty true. That's pretty true. Yeah. I I stand by that. I like that. Nothing is hotter than minding your own damn business. (laughs) (laughs) No greater aphrodisiac than holding the door for an old lady. (laughs) Yes. And and holding your tongue. Oh, even better. For an old lady. For an old lady. Now, Omen. Nick, hello. Next week, I think we've got another song that you don't know. How? That, uh, th- I quit. That's mm, shocking. Have you ever heard I'm Your Gun? I've heard of it. I may have heard it, but it's not one that I'm very familiar with. We are really in uh, in the dark lands here in terms of my, my tall listening experience. 
Yeah, we've got two more bonus tracks until the end of Broadsword here. We've got I'm Your Gun and Down at the End of Your Road. Pretty sure you've heard Down at the End of Your Road. I For some I reason, sure I know have. that one. Yeah, but I Am Your Gun, I've probably only heard once or twice, so it's going to be fairly new for me as well. And we should say that we these are the final, we're approaching the final two bonus tracks that currently exist from the Broadsword Correct. release, and we may hear more later on. As of July 21st, 2022, the Steve Wilson remix has not been released. I reckon it's going to be next year. They've been really hush-hush about it, so... We'll see, but we'll we'll toss those those whatever new tracks they they pull out there. We'll toss them into the the mix further on down the road. We'll cram them in between a couple of uh, between two albums as we uh, as we get further on. Cram them between two pieces of bread and make a bonus track sandwich. A little uh, stone ground mustard on there. A little a little rocket. Yeah, it'd be good. If you're a rich man's friend and never know what to get him for a present, why not get some branded Talk Tall to Me merch? The gift that is unique. And wearable. The greatest rhythm in gold I could think of is rhythm in five gold stars. Yes. In the form of a rating. And you know what? Throw a review in there while you're at it, please. That's right. Until next week, I am a lady of means, Nick McGill. I didn't even look at you, Omen Thomas said. We are the immobilized Fiat 500, the feckless moms. And no puss would dare to be Talk Tall to Me. Hey, Bruno, it's been a long Jimmy. time. Hey, 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 how you doing? Jimmy the face, oh my God. I gotta smoke three cigarettes at once, I'm so excited. Bruno, have you had the new meatballs down the street? They ought oh. to die for. Yeah, I would I would slip my grandma a 20 <laughs> to change over to that recipe. Oh, oh, Jimmy. What? Jimmy, what's look that? what's rocking down the street. It's a, it's a vision of beauty. Oh, oh. my God. My my the loins of my heart are inflamed. I gotta I gotta yell out some words. Give it to him. Hey baby! Baby, yes, yes, you! You really truly look like you're manifesting positivity in your life! Don't take no for an answer when you're asking for a raise. Yes! Work it! Oh man. Really had a heart attack. So uh, you need you need to take a breather, Bruno. That's it's- a, that's a lot. That's a lot you just went through. Oh, there's, a, oh, there's another There's another pretty dame. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Those shoes go so well with your purse, ma'am. So well. I cannot commend you enough for that. So good. Look at that purse. Look at it swing. Oh. You know, you know, Jimmy, I just love the springtime. I love the springtime when the broads and the non-binaries are out in, in the little sundresses. Oh, my God. Oh, my God, Jimmy. Jimmy, look over there. Look at that! Oh. Look at that fine piece of self-actualized human being. I have to wipe the drool from my chin. <laughs> hey, lady! Hey, lady! You are the success your ancestors dreamed of. You make your parents proud every day. <laughs> well done, Bruno. She, you, you gave her a what for? That's for sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm feeling really, really, really hyped up on this uh, meatball sauce. Always gets me feeling frisky oh look at this look at this coming over here hey hey you with the self-confidence to walk boldly and proudly yeah yeah you know what you know what i have to say to you talk tall to me it's it's a proud member of the feckless moms audio network that was beautiful jimmy i know i know they deserved it they deserved it jimmy jimmy bruno walk away walk away from me okay here i go hey you with the meatballs oh what is it hey hey I really value our friendship. Okay, goodbye. Oh, come, bring it in. Bring it in for the real thing. Oh, oh, I got meatball sauce on you. Worth it. Dab, don't wipe. Get some club soda at the the pagoda over here. The pagoda. What's the what's the corner store? Bodega. Bodega. <laughs>